All right, praise God. We thank God for his goodness today. We thank God for what he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do. We just got out having the Lord's Supper, which was good. We thank God for his blood that was shed for us. Amen. Those listening by Facebook, we're honored to have you today. We pray that a word will come forth that will help you in your walk with God and where you may be struggling. Our job here at Messenger of the Fire Ministries is to help you not struggle, amen? Show you ways to defeat an enemy that tries to defeat you when he's already been defeated. I'm going to talk about the kingdom. We could call it being addicted to God. If you hear people laughing, it's all right. When they get, they get touched by God in here, they might start laughing, they might start dancing. Dear Jesus, you never know what's going to go on in the house of God around here. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with laughter. Some people get all upset if they're religious. You shouldn't be laughing in the church of God. No, I never read that, but that's okay. God said laughter like a medicine does, a body. Some of you need to laugh. Go look in the mirror. You need to laugh. You need something to get you out of where you're at in your mess. Don't become religious. Get saved. You cried over all the bad stuff been happening in your life. Wouldn't it be good to start laughing over some things now? Amen, Amen, brother. Sometimes I gotta laugh when I see my electric bill. Like, dear God, <laughs> get the cable bill and go. My gracious, help me, Jesus. Why are you laughing? Because if I don't, I'm gonna cry. I mean, cable costs you now what a car payment used to be. I'm just saying it does, especially when you got two buildings. Cable bill don't go down, it goes up. Up and up. <laughs> I got a cable, I got to have, I got to have internet so I can be talking to you right now. I wouldn't get to talk to you beautiful people out there on Facebook if I didn't have internet right now. Praise God, we paid the internet bill because we want to talk to y'all about Jesus. Amen. Give God some glory. We want to make people happy, ain't that right, Sister Cat? No, that's really her name, Cat. That's what they call her. I, I'm talking to a cat. That's on the lady called Cat. No, it ain't. This is not a. Catwoman from TV stuff. Those are names. Gotta keep people straight. Come here a minute, cat. Just come up here beside me. This is one of my kids in the spirit. Say hi to people on Facebook. I know. Don't be don't don't be hard on her because she's happy. What is that? The anointing? Yeah, it's yeah. nice and thick up here, isn't it? Yeah. That's why I hold on all the time, Cat. Just hang on. Hang on for the ride, Cat. She used to be broke, busted, disgusted, and miserable. Look what God showed up. Amen. No way. That's the wrong being happy, is it? Happy, happy, happy. Ain't nothing wrong with the joy of the Lord. My Lord, that's all right. Somebody else. Thank you, sister. I'm glad he's up here with me. <laughs> You're hanging on just like him. Look, I got my hand on two Bibles and one out the corner. We're ready, huh? Look what the title is. Oh, what is it? Oh, I like that. Kingdom addiction. That's me. Get addicted to God. <laughs> this is what happens when you get addicted to God. Amen. 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 That's all right. Amen. You gonna stay up here much longer? Yeah, really. <laughs> 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 she's sitting on my row. Yeah, that was pretty good. Cool. Cool. <laughs> we need things to make people happy. We need to be happy. <laughs> he probably looks like gross. <laughs> Bible says, "In this world, you go through persecution. You'll suffer persecution." Didn't say we didn't have to be happy in the process. Did? I mean, come on now. Amen. Those who love God's ways are doing things that will ultimately bring success in their life. Those who love God's ways of doing things will have ultimate success in their life. Do you you got to want success. You got to want to be successful in God. The more addicted to God you become, the more successful you will be. Is Facebook on yet? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Victoria was asking. Everybody, that's Pastor Janet back there asking everybody to let you know, Victoria and everybody that's on her. Say hi at the bottom of the screen where Pastor Janet knows that we're up. Amen. Amen. She's trying to make sure the people's on her at once better. She's she's the co-pilot over there. God's the pilot. She's the co-pilot pushing the buttons on Actually, Facebook. I was caught up in pictures. Saying hi to everything. Yeah, everybody on there. Amen. Oh, let me go check. Yeah. Amen. So we'll go back to the message. Amen. Can't wait when people buy these videos. They get the family affair when they first started. We go directly to the family affair, amen? 
Hey, we're just real people with real problems got a real Savior that delivers us. Amen. Amen. Real people with real problems have got a Savior that delivers us. Right, Chris? Amen. We ain't religious around here. If you want to come in your religious, you come on, we'll take care of religion. Take about 10 seconds. Amen. Real quick like. I don't like people walk in all messed up and walk out still messed up. When you walk in messed up, hopefully you're going to leave here straightened up. Amen. Amen. I want you leaving a good way. Amen. Amen. Bring your stuff to the Lord and watch him take care of it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, so those who love God's ways are doing things of doing things will ultimately have success in life. God has given us the free will to choose between his kingdom and Satan's kingdom. And I'm going to tell you something. You're going to find out something in today's society. More people choose the kingdom of darkness than they've ever choose the kingdom of light. More people choose the kingdom of darkness than the light. The kingdom or the kingdom of this world. See, Satan's the god of this world. But we got to remember, God's the God of everything. Well, everything got to bow to God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Including the devil. That's it. That's right. He got that revelation. Now, people of this world need to get that revelation. Amen. 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 So, although it may seem as if ungodly people are more successful than Christian, God's way is the only way that leads to true, lasting success and prosperity in life. Amen. 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 Complete wholeness and, full, and fullness can only come from Jesus. This is what it means to have true riches in heaven. You can be just as rich here. Money don't make you rich. God's spirit makes you rich. His presence is the greatest possession you'll ever have on this planet. If you can bring God down, Lord Jesus, you're in a place. When you can bring the spirit of God in a house, oh Lord Jesus. Now that's something to get excited about, amen. Come on, You can walk in a mess and straighten it up in a flat minute when God shows up. People forget all about their problems when God shows up because He's He's the problem solver, amen. We're whining about your problems. Take your problems to God and watch what He'll do with it. I'm just saying, glory be to God, get myself excited. I get saved every time I get up here. Well, hey, salvation's the day, amen. Save just means to be healed, delivered, and persevere. Every day I'm being delivered, every day I'm persevering. I'm overcoming every day. Wow, we're overcoming. All right now. Don't shout me down because I'm happy. Oh, Jesus, you want to live in depression? Hang out there. I'm going to hang out here where it's fun in Jesus. Amen. All right. There is a difference between God's kingdom and the world's system. That I'm today. <laughs> there is a difference between God's kingdom and the world system that operates today. You got Satan's kingdom and God's kingdom. They operate totally different. Amen. 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 The world system, or Satan's system, I should say, goes against God's word. Amen. Amen. The world system is ruled by Satan. He's the ruler of this world. He's the God of this world. Why do you think Jesus said when he said you, you're not of this world? Why do you think he said you overcame this world because you're not of this world? You're seated far above everything in this world. You're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Who's over everything. Come on, man. You got to get it. Quit getting addicted to drugs. Quit getting addicted to cigarettes. Quit getting addicted to alcohol. Right. Getting addicted to pornography. Getting addicted to lying. Getting addicted to cheating. Get addicted to Jesus and he'll solve your other addictions. Whatever you're addicted by is what owns you. That's it. it becomes your God. That's it. So get addicted to the God. His name is Jesus. Amen? Amen. <laughs> the world system itself will give you bits of truth. It'll tell you truth. Bits of it, but it's what I call twisted truth. It's twisted. A lot of times you'll find a little bit of truth in a lie. That little bit of truth that's in a lie will not be what will save you. It's what will destroy you for that little bit of truth that's in a lie because ultimately it's wrapped up in a lie. Here's your lie. There's a lot of gods. You're even called a God in the Bible with a little G. But there's only one God that can save you and me. His name is Jesus. It ain't Buddha. It ain't Muhammad. It ain't none of them. It ain't no Hindu God. One God named Lord Jesus. 
And if he ain't your God, then all the other gods are going to hell. Amen. So you better have the right God. Amen. Amen. One of the kings in the world system is selfishness. One of the kings in the world system is called selfishness. In God's kingdom, it's called selflessness. In God's kingdom, it's called selflessness. In the world system, it's called selfishness. Two different kings, two different functions. One points to self, and one points to God. When you become selfless, you're operating out of the kingdom of God. When you become self, all about self, you're operating out of the world system. Are you with me? Amen. Yes. Understand, God's world leads to eternal life. The world system leads to total damnation. That's right. They're both leading somewhere. God's system will lead you to life. The world system will lead you to hell. But more people operate out of the world system than those who operate out of God's system. When you change it, you will see change. Amen? Amen. Bear with me. Also understand something. God's system operates by faith. Faith ain't yesterday. Faith is right now. Right this moment, faith is. So don't tell me faith ain't there. Faith is always there. Because faith is what? Right now. I'm not waiting on faith. Faith is waiting on me. Amen? You can change your atmosphere in one second. Just by a change of thought. That's it. Come on, that's true. Change your mindset, you change everything. That's it. Come on. You can choose to get up unhappy or choose to get up happy. That's exactly right. But I didn't feel like being happy. It ain't based on what you felt like. Get up and be happy. Amen. And your feelings will change. Amen. That's right. That's right. Your emotions are controlled by your atmosphere that you allow to hover over you or around you. Walk into a funeral home. You can feel the atmosphere. Someone is dead here. They've died. This is a time not to be happy. Go tell that to one of my children when we was cracking up laughing at her own mother's funeral because we were happy she was in heaven. If she wasn't going to heaven, we should have been sad. What should have been even more sad is we didn't do nothing to get her to heaven. We allowed her to go to hell when we should have been doing what we needed to do to get her to heaven. Amen. He's all right. All right. He's on fire. He's on fire. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what we did? All right. We walked in and started thanking God for His goodness. And what He did, and what we did, we was laughing in the Holy Ghost, having fun. People looked at it like we was crazy, sister. We wasn't crazy. We was changing the atmosphere because we had something to be happy about. Man, when Christians die, it ought to be a celebration. Have a party. Amen. 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 Yes. Well, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> Come on, man. That system is of the world. The system of God is we got something to be excited about. We have eternal life. Amen. Count it all joy. Brother, there's times I don't feel like him. Times I don't feel like counting joy. But why not count it joy and count it misery? Because either way, you're going to get something. And I'd much rather have joy than misery. I mean, you can look at Paul. You can look at Silas. You can look at all the men in the Bible. Here's Paul's in the prison. He's all upset. No, he wasn't upset. He was in there because God was getting ready to do something. What? He was getting ready to save everybody in the prison, and they didn't even know it. Amen. You think Silas didn't look at him like he was a nut? Well, I hung out with you. I decided to follow you around. Look, you done got me in jail with you. Well, You're a good guy to hang out with. Right. Well, let's just praise God, Silas. Let's give him glory. <laughs> For what? <laughs> we're in jail. <laughs> well, let's just give him glory anyway, because he's God regardless of where we're at. He's still God. Amen. So what they did, they gave God some praise. They went in the world system, gave God some praise, and what did God do? Tear down the walls. All right. Knock Woo! off the chains yeah. off of them. Got a, got a prisoner saved. They got saved all over the place. And then the, the guard's family even got saved because of it. That's right. What? He walked into a situation that was operated by the world, and he's changed it and put it into another situation under God's kingdom. And in God's kingdom, people were getting set free, delivered, and healed instantly. Amen. 
You're in the world system, change it to God's yes. system. Amen. The world system should always bow to God's system. Because it's far above them. You better believe it's greater. Amen? Yes. We got to also remember, the kingdom of God is operated by faith, and God's word is the final authority in this system. God's head of everything. Just like we did in the beginning, I felt something in the spirit. I said, hey, we got to take some authority right now. Time to take authority. Why? I'm changing the system. Well, this is God's house, and in this house, God's going to be praised. God's going to be honored. He's going to be glorified. God is going to be God of this house. Amen. He's God. God ain't leaving. The devil's leaving. That's right. He left before we even got here. He don't even come around here anymore. Just saying. Unconditional love dominates God's kingdom. Selfishness will dominate the world system, the world's kingdom. But in God's kingdom, love dominates. For God is what? Love. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? That's right. That unconditional love is what dominates the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. Come here, we'll love the hell right out of you. Amen. Amen. Come here, we'll love it right out of you. Amen. Amen. That's right. Yeah, that's what the last one said. You ain't here, are you? Come here and see. Because the only thing you're ever dealing with when people come to church, yeah. to the building, we're the church, but when they come to the building, all you're dealing with is people that don't know how to accept true love. All right. Amen. And so what rejection comes out of them is the love that's not in them. Amen. What rejection comes out of them is the love that's not within them. That's right. So you have to put the love of God within them and rejection will be removed. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Yes. Are you with me? Yeah. So remember, the kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. God's ways are higher than our ways. God's ways ain't our ways. Thank you, Jesus. In the, in the world system, somebody smacks you, you slap him right upside the head. Somebody steals from you, you're going to get even with them. That's the world system. Yeah. And God's system, you turn the other cheek. Amen. Pray to God, God before you smack him. Yeah. You might get the wrong system. Oh, Lord. I know that's right. Amen. I'm just saying. Make sure they got God. Don't catch them when they're napping. I was out of spirit there, Brother Ted. I don't know what that came over me. All I know is my hand moved instantly. I didn't know what to do with it. Oh, I'm watching people get quiet now. Come on now. Our system don't work like our system. That's right. Remember, the kingdom of God is God doing things his way. Amen. Walking in love, living by faith. I'm going to give you some things of God's kingdom. Walking in love, living by faith, praying, meditating, confessing God's word will lead you to total success in God's kingdom. Amen. Not murmuring, backbiting, complaining. Selfishness, self-centeredness. What's that? That's the world system. That's, right. That's the world's way of doing it. I'm going to get even with that person for what they did to me. Boy, you wait till tomorrow. <laughs> I'll make their life miserable. Ew. Wow. That's the world system. Make me look bad in front of everybody. <laughs> wait till tomorrow. Wait till what I make you look like. That get even mentality. All you're doing is shooting your own foot. You say Jesus is Lord, you better operate out of the right system. Because if you operate out of the world system when you're supposed to be operating in God's system, don't think you won't get the benefits of the world system because you will. Because you change positions. You stop being seated with God and you just come on down with the rest of the world and walk with the world. Stay seated, you get the benefits of the kingdom. Get out of your seat, you get the benefits of the world. Get addicted to Jesus, I'm telling you. You gotta remember, Jesus is our champion, man. He's our hero. He's the one that showed us how to do it. Amen. He never returned evil for evil. Never. Why? Why would you take yourself from God's kingdom to the world system? Mm -hmm. He never reviled back. Why? Because he didn't want to go from the world system to God's system. He wanted to stay in the system that would bring absolute success and prosperity in his life. Yes. And in that process, you have to become selfless That's it. instead of selfish. 
Because selfishness will always strike back. But when you come selfless, you won't strike back because you're operating in the realm of love. Remember, it's unconditional love. 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 That's why we have so many churches today. People got to find a place where they're accepted. Yes. Because it's not unconditional love where they're at. Amen. Well, I don't like that about you. We don't like that about you. I ain't saying we're perfect here. We're working on it. We're still adjusting ourselves to some area. So we want to give places grace. But at the same time, you expect, you expect people to walk in your church. Some women walk in there. They just left the bar. They were stripping at it. And somebody talked them into coming into church. And now you're all upset because of the way they dress. What did you used to look like? Come on, brother. Preach that truth. Come on. They don't have the problem you do because you ought to be holy enough and sanctified enough that right now that shouldn't be bothering you all. You should be caring about if that person gets saved. Hallelujah. And then a little later in the process, we'll make sure the tops get raised and the pants go down. Come on. But we'll do it by the Spirit of God, not by the flesh of man. Oh, that's right. Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come I came from the world, man. I was one of the guys that were at the bar watching the woman do the stripping. Come on. Come on now. Jesus. Give her time to be sanctified, purified, and made holy. Amen. If you're struggling with it, maybe you don't get your own insecurities. Amen. Get beyond yourself. Amen. God sanctified her heart. Give him time to take care of the rest of the body. Amen. Right. <laughs> I notice things in church. Women get all upset when one of those women walk in. But let the man walk in with a muscle shirt on and spend at the gym all day. Oh, Lord, he's looking good, Bob. Praise God, ain't nothing wrong with that. He takes care of his temple. <laughs> you didn't think I was going to leave you out there by yourself, did you, man? Don't think I don't hit both sides of the barn road. I don't care. <laughs> Oh, don't make him put his shirt on. <laughs> it's hot out here today. You got to give people grace to get sanctified. That's the truth. They came from the world system. They're coming into God's system right. looking for unconditional love. And they finding there's conditions all over our love. Well, they yes. go back out in the world. Can't they receive that? You gotta, you gotta give God time by the Spirit to change them. Yes. How many needs time for Him to change you? Raise your hand. Right. Then you better be giving God some grace for people. Jesus, right. amen. amen. Why they coming up in here? Yeah. <laughs> Come up in here. Don't they know who we are? Right. We the holiness of God. Yeah, right. Oh, my. <laughs> That's holiness. I don't want it. Expose them. Expose the enemy. Come on now. Misunderstand me. People come in. I'm not going to, you don't want to let people come in here acting crazy. But I'm just saying, give them a little grace to be changed. That's right. That's right. We got to get them from the system of the world into God's system where there could be transformation. I didn't get changed in a day. I was a drug addict. You think you're going to change me in a day? It wasn't happening. I smoked cigarettes for 20 years. You're going to tell me to quit? God better do it. And he did, he instantly delivered me of it. But there's some people, man, they go through the trial of dying of that thing. Yes. That's right. Why? Because that addiction had something stronger in them God had to deal with. That's right. And believe me, when you get down to the root, That's you don't have to worry about the other stuff. It fall off you left and right. Some people operate out of their addictions because of their insecurity. Some operate out of their addictions because they're not loved where they needed to be loved. They were rejected in their life. And the last thing they need is more rejection. Amen. Lord God, they're changing my message while I'm preaching, Chris. That's good. Good Lord. Walking in love, living by faith, praying, meditating, <laughs> confessing God's word leads to success in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ lived according to God's word. Jesus operated according to the kingdom of God's system. When you operate according to God's system, you get the result of that system. The result you're getting is based upon your operation. How are you operating? Which system are you operating out of? Are you operating out of God's system? Or are you operating out of the world system? Whichever one you're operating in, out of is the one that's dictating your life. Get addicted to God, man. I ain't going to operate that way. You crazy? You gave your car away. Good. 
<laughs> Some of you need to give your car away. It owns you. Amen. That's right. what I'm on now. Yes, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. You baby it every week, man, every week, and you're washing the tires, washing the rims, vacuuming it out, cleaning the dash, taking it for an overhaul. You get done, man, I spot getting a Lord Jesus, give me a paper towel. Oh, Lord, don't let nothing, Lord, don't get on my car. But you won't get out of bed on a Sunday morning to go to church and give glory and praise to the one that gave you the car. Amen. 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 Shoot, Lord Jesus, I'm getting saved or not. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You have to choose one side and remain in one system to get results. I hear people all the time. That's now time, Sister Ted. How you doing, Brother Teddy? How you doing? How do you see God bless you like that? God blesses you when you hang out in the right system. You go to the store and take money off your cards. They end up giving the stuff away to you. Here, I don't know. I'm just going to give it to you. Well, I don't even need it. I don't know. Do something with it. What are you going to do with it? Well, you, why did, they don't give it to me, Brother Ted. They give it to me because if I don't need it, I give it away. You don't do that. You take it and then sell it. Come on. Oh, come on. That's true. Talk about it. Yeah. That's good. Lord Jesus, I done stepped on some toes now. That's true. That's true. That's true. God wanted me to get a profit. The profit was you done passed up the profit. The prophet was, he gave it to you to give it away. And when you gave it away, you got everything you needed. You didn't do it. You tried to think about it. Instead of selflessness, it was all about self. You got your reward, right? What you wanted. You got the benefit of that. And the next time you go out, you ain't going to get another one like that. You were tested. Tried in the fire. God was looking for his glory in you. And all he felt was you. Oh, Jesus. You have to choose one side and remain in the one system to get the result. When you become born again, you have to learn to switch systems. That's the process you're in. You're going from a worldly system to a godly system, and they don't work together. Jesus. They're not, they, they, they don't even link together. They're two systems. They're being empowered by two different things. One's empowered by the Spirit of God. One's empowered by the Antichrist Spirit. You must choose which system. Many Christians try to unsuccessfully mix the systems. When you mix negative with positive, you get a short circuit. When you mix the two systems, you get a short circuit. And you will always get short circuited. Amen? You always get short circuited. So you have to understand that many Christians unsuccessfully mix the two systems. Mixing the two six, uh, systems is like mixing water with oil. It won't work. Amen? In the last days, you got to understand something. There's going to be a great separation between the two systems, the two places you operate out of. Whether you're operating out of the Spirit of God or you're operating out of an Antichrist spirit, both of them are going to bring forth something. One will bring forth the life of God in your life. The other will bring total destruction. There's people even in churches today. I tried it. It didn't work. You didn't try God. Amen. Amen. God always works. He don't stop working. He's God. His system never fails. The world system always fails. God's system will never fail. And the world system will always fail. Amen? Amen. The fruits of our life produces its production, or show, it should say shows, the evidence of which system we're activated in, which system we're operating in. Look for the fruit in your life in the areas where you're operating out of the wrong system. It's simple. Repent. Change. Go the right direction. Don't condemn yourself or beat yourself up because you may not have knew that you needed to make a change in the system. But when you know, just make the change. Right. Will it be easy? Absolutely not. That's right. Come on, if it was easy, everybody would do it. That's right. All I can tell you is it's a guarantee that it's capable to do it because you've got the Spirit of God within you. You just must pick, you must pick the system. Amen. Did anybody ever go from using candles to using electricity? I did. When they showed my electricity bill, they, I didn't pay it, they showed my electricity off. We had to go buy candles. Right. And believe me, I didn't like that system. 
It was a hard adjustment. The light wasn't as bright. And the candles didn't last as long. I had to go keep going to the store buy more candles. Then I wanted to increase because I had a little more money. So I bought a combing lantern. And I bought the oil to put in it. The light got a little brighter. But I still had to keep making continuous trips to the store for more oil. More oil, I should say. And then I got a revelation. Pay your electric bill and you don't got to go to the store no more. And baby, you can have all the lights you want. Because you can get a 50 watt, a 100 watt, a 200 watt, a 500 watt light. You can make your house so bright it's ridiculous. If you just pay your electricity bill. Jesus. And warm water. Amen. And you get warm water because when electricity gone, it's cold time, baby. Well, I heat it up. You won't be heating it up because you probably ain't got no electric stove working now. Unless you're lucky and got gas. If you couldn't afford electric, you probably couldn't afford the gas. Well, it's all part of the same bill. So the bottom line is, wisdom would be pay the electric bill. Yes. Get on the right system to get the results you're looking for. Yes. You want to have life, then you got to get connected to life. Yes. Come on. Get addicted to Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. Go in your Bible to Matthew, please, chapter 6. Lord got me up here preaching. Actually, don't go there. I want you to go to Psalms first. Go to Psalms. Go to Psalms 122. I want to go here first. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord we got to remember there's great success in God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. God wants us to be successful. Hey, look, if you are not successful, you make God look bad. Okay. I remember what a brother said one time, and, I, and, and when he first said it, I thought, well, man, that's not good. Yeah. I can't believe he said that. But let me give you a revelation of what he said. And, and, and I respect me as a mighty man of God, but here's the thing. What he said was very true. I just wasn't in a place in God's spirit that I could receive it. <clears throat> Amen? Because I was... Basically, the person driving the car that she was driving. This woman had a car that had Jesus all over the bumpers. I mean, she had it all over the car. Now, she may have been in her walk with God just in the beginning. And she was really zealous for God and on fire for God. And here's what she said. She had to say, come follow my Jesus. And he got behind her one day and he said, why should I follow your Jesus? He can't afford to buy you a car. And God said, sure I can. You're getting ready to do it. Amen. So she got a car. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But here's the other thing I heard. I heard brother say that too. And said, why should I follow you, Jesus? You can't buy a car. And he didn't do that. He never did anything. He never stepped into the right system. The system was, he should have said, the Jesus you served is a God that I serve, and I'll show you how to get to where I'm at. Because I'll buy you a car and show you how I got the car that God bought me. Amen, amen, amen. So how you look at the system. Amen. His, his first response was out of a worldly system. Right. Worldly system said, your God can't afford to buy you a car. Mm -hmm. My system or your system, what we're supposed to operate out of, says, I'll buy the car for you and you'll see the God that I serve. Amen, I love that. So how you handle the system. Amen. See, you can be in the world and change the way the world system works if you operate from God's system. Matter of fact, God's system will instantly change their system if you operate out of it. Amen. The world system can't create fishes and loaves. And God's system, it creates whatever God wants. He's a creator. Amen. He'll bring something out of nothing. Because everything started from nothing. God said, let there be light. What was it? Light. Nice system. That's how the electricity first started. You thought that the guy that created electricity was the guy that... No, he didn't. He didn't know nothing about light till the sun started to shine. God created light. Just saying. Uh, Miss Rainer, read Psalms 122, 6 through 9 for me. So remember, there's a great system. There's a great system in God's kingdom. It'll bring light, and in the world system, it'll bring destruction. Amen? Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you, the holy city. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek, inquire for, and require your good. So if you love the kingdom of God and you operate out of the kingdom of God, you'll have what in the kingdom of God? Prosperity. God promises it. 
And God ain't a man, he'll lie to you. Amen. And this ain't about money. You can have all the money in the world and be the most miserable person in the world. But when you got prosperity within your soul, man, man, prosperous and so prosperous, money will hunt you down. Amen. Amen. That's right. You know why money hunt people down that got God operating in them properly? It's because money don't got them. That's right. The world don't have them. That's right. When the world's got them, money's got them. Because right. the love of money is the root of all evil. Money's not evil. But when you're in God's system and all you want is just as a man prospereth in his soul. Oh, Lord, your mind, your will, and your emotion change. God will give you the money because he can get it through you. That's why he'll bring it to you. But if he knows he can't get it through you, he sure ain't going to bring it to you. That's amen. Because he knows what you do. You'll be selfish. That's right. That's exactly right. I threw that in as an extra. I wasn't even in there on money. <laughs> Got to understand. <laughs> Prosperity is wholeness in every area of life. When you share... When you share with God what God has given you with someone else, prosperity is at its highest point. Amen. That's exactly right. When you share what God has given to you, prosperity is at its highest point. I've seen people in this body do supernatural things that allow this ministry to do what? Supernatural things. So I've seen prosperity at its highest point in this body through about everyone in this body. Why? Because it took great people to make a great ministry become great for God. Amen. To buy the Amen. things for God that needed to be bought so that God could be proclaimed. Amen. Well, I said, if God get it to you, get it through you. If he can't get it to you, he probably won't give it to you. That's right. Come on. Why should he? Y'all be about you. That's right. <clears throat> I've had people ask me, what are you going to do with it? What do I always do with it? Spend it on God. I ain't found nothing better to spend money on than God Almighty. I'm serious, man. I spend money on God all the time. I had fun. I know it is fun. I done told people, I'm not a gambling man, but I'm trying to give God, Bob, and I'm losing miserably. But boy, am I having a blast losing. <laughs> Best loss I've ever had in my life. I used to lose everything. My wallet, my money, my home, my house, my food. My, I lost my wife for a long time. I was losing everything. Then I met God. God just gave me my wife, my house, my home, my friend, my health, my life. Gave it all back. Because what I started giving to God, what other people were taking. The world system will take it from you and God will bring it to you. You just got to get in the right system. Just saying. Glory to God. The peace you share will be returned to you. Amen. The word prosperity and peace are translated shalom in the Hebrew. They both mean the same thing. Shalom. Amen. Amen. When you give to others, God increases your portion. You, people get all upset because major ministries are flourishing. Maybe because they're the biggest givers. You'd be surprised what some people give away. You crying about giving 20 bucks. Somebody just gave a jet away. Amen. Wasn't to me, so I'm going to call them up and let them know. Next time, brother, I need one of those. I'm looking for quick transportation. Me too. Amen. I don't have to wait in line, then I just fly on out there. Amen. Come on now. Go in your Bible. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Amen. Got to get addicted to God, man. Get addicted to God. Yes. Get addicted to what's in God's kingdom, what God has for you in the kingdom. God has prosperity in every area of life. God wants you to be healed. Amen. God wants you to be delivered. He doesn't want you depressed. Amen. Amen. Depression should be the furthest word from the kingdom of God there's ever been. Amen. People in the kingdom of God should never be depressed. Amen. Why, why, could you, why, how should you, why should you ever be depressed with happiness? <laughs> why should you be depressed with good health, Chris? I mean, come on now. Why are you riding so dang healthy? I can't stand it today. I mean, really, come on, think about it. Why would you be depressed about that? <laughs> Amen? Come on now. People get all in the world system and get hooked in the world system. Let me give you one, another thing. Worry is an indication that you are not operating according to the kingdom of God's system. Worry is an indication that you're not operating according to the kingdom of God's system. Let's read Matthew 6, 25 through 35. Uh, to, uh, 33 please. Hallelujah. Therefore I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried about your life. 
what you shall eat or what you shall drink or about your body, what you shall put, what you shall put on. Is not life greater in quality than food and the body far above and more excellent than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you, by worrying and being anxious, can add one unit of measure, cubit, to his stature or to the span of his life? And why should you be anxious about clothes? Consider the lilies of the field and learn thoroughly how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his magnificence, excellence, dignity, and grace was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and green, and tomorrow is tossed into the furnace, will he not much more surely clothe you, O you of little faith? Stop right there, man. Notice he said what David was little of? Faith. faith. When is faith? Now. Do you have enough in you to believe God now for what you need? Yeah. Do you really believe him to make the change that you need to make change? Do you believe him enough that you'll give him time to change it properly? Amen. Yeah. I've learned in taking care of my vehicle, you can put cheap tires on it or you can pay a little more and put good tires on it. But I promise you, they're both going to wear out, but they determine how quick they wear out by the tire you buy. You can put cheap oil in your car or not cheap oil. You can put cheap windshield wipers on your car. You can put expensive windshield wipers. I just had windshield wipers put on my car. It cost me $58 for a set of windshield wipers. I said, are they gold bronze? Yeah. They got gold trim around them? Yeah. He said, no, but they got a lifetime guarantee that they will last you, and they're the best windshield wiper made. Right. They do not streak. I was like, for $58, they are to talk to me. Yeah, <laughs> But I bought those $17 windshield wipers that I've replaced about every other year. And I said, you know what? I'm going to buy a set of windshield wipers that's going to last me a little long because I don't like them when I have to have them changed. Amen. Same way with my tires. Oh, Lord, Brother Teddy, I got a great set of tires. How much you pay? $250. <laughs> Six months down the road. Where are you going? I got to get new tires. Why you got to get new tires? Well, the ones I bought for $250, where are they? I've had mine on my car for five years. What would you get for yours? About a thousand bucks. Thousand dollars? Well, figure it up. About every two years you're buying tires. When you get done, you tell me who paid more money, lost more time, and spent more time putting tires on their car, and we'll see who got to relax while the other one was going down to Walmart. That's right. That's right. That's true. That's true. Amen. Two different systems. That's it. Get a revelation. Worrying is not going to fix your tires. Amen. Worrying is not going to do one thing for you in your life. Take your worries to the Lord. Amen. Tell him in secret what you need to manifest in the natural. That's it. And then wait for the manifestation. I remember one time many years ago, Pastor Jen and I, she had prayed to God, God, I would like to have a hand. I want a hand. Well, you didn't know what we was doing. We were taking all the food out of our cabinets. And I ain't talking about the junk food. I'm talking about the good food. He got on us over that. He said, you're going to give your worst away and keep the best for you. He said, give your best away and you keep the worst. And then I'll bring you my best. Amen. If you want my best, give your best. Amen. So we did that because we were convicted. And he said, I want you to, she said, I just want a ham, Lord. Here come a little box one day. We've gone away witnessing about Jesus. Came home, little box on our back porch. We know why they brought the box. But there it was. She opened up, man. Got down the bottom, there's a little can ham. Woman did a dance through the house, man, in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> she said, I can't me so much. There's a ham. <laughs> Why? Because he heard her cry. He, he prayed for her to it, for it in secret, and God manifested it in the natural. That's Jesus. Amen. Why? She operated in a different system. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Bring what you need to me, God says. Don't go tell 52,000 people what you need sometimes. That's right. Sometimes we tell people, and then they, they do it. They go, God showed up. Well, sometimes people show up. That's it. I'm not saying they always don't show up. God may show up too in that process because God has to convict the heart to do things. But just operate out of the right system. Amen. Anyway, finish reading, Miss Brandon. Stay in faith. Let me say it that way. Therefore, do not worry and be anxious, saying, What are we going to have to eat? 
or what are we going to have to drink or what are we going to have to wear for the gentiles heathen wish for and crave and diligently seek all these things and your heavenly father knows well that you need them all but seek aim at and strive after first of all his kingdom and his righteousness his way of doing and being right and then all these things taken together will be given you besides so do not worry or be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will have worries and anxieties of its own sufficient for each day is its own trouble so every day is going to have what trouble every day is going to have what worries but he said, be, be what? Be, be where you're supposed to be. Be trusting God, in God. Knowing that God's got this. He's got your back. Amen. Is anybody in here ever starved to death yet? If y'all have, I'm going to see how y'all did it without losing weight. Because I ain't figured that one out. When you're not eating, something coming off of you. That's right. Don't none of us look malnourished in here. <laughs> So God made sure we were eating, right? That's right. Yeah, but I need a chili dog, and I wanted a filet mignon. Well, <laughs> thank God you got the chili dog. Some people don't even have rice. But God loves you enough that he took care of you, and then he sent somebody over there to bring them even rice. God knows your need and my need. Remember, God is your source. Amen? Do not make the mistake of thinking of your job or your business as your source. When people get jobs, God gave you that job. Be thankful you got it because God gave it. Amen. That's right. Amen. I've watched people in this church get blessed left and right with great jobs. Why? They are faithful people That's here. Right and the faithfulness of them showed the faithfulness of God who brought them better jobs. Amen. Amen. Say, God blesses us with resources. Amen. Amen. He does. Your job was a blessing of God. Amen. God paying us electric bill was a blessing or we'd be sitting in the dark. But if we couldn't afford an electric bill, we probably wouldn't have the building either. So I thank God he paid it all. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Amen. God but God blesses us with resources. However, th these things are not our source. God is the source for your resource. Amen. That's right. God is the source for your resource. Amen. 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 Worry is an indication that you don't trust God. So I do want to trust him, Mary. Then in that area, that's where God's going to work on you. If you have an area in your life that you're struggling, that's an area that where probably God's going to be working on you because you don't trust him. Amen? Well, let's get quiet in here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Worry is an indication you are not trusting God. Refuse to meditate on negative thoughts, which will bring worry. When you meditate on the negative, you prove you do not know God's covenant and his promises. That's true. There is no thing in God's covenant where he says he won't take care of you. Amen. Amen. Everything in the covenant says he'll take care of you. That's right. Thoughts will come to your mind, but you do not have to receive the thoughts. It says if he loved you, he'd take care of you. I asked a question earlier in the service. I said, was there people in your life that you saw either on TV or not on TV at one point in your life you would have loved to have been like or seen like or been like that person and people raised their hand? We all to some degree did. We have what people call, some people call idols. We have some people that we look up to because of what they've done in either ministry or different things. But then I made the statement. If you'd have been like that person and God would have allowed you to have been like them, that meant you would have got everything they got. And later on, some of those people ended up dying of major sicknesses or diseases or died a horrible death, or had horrible things happen to them. And I said, if you'd have known that was going to happen to them, how many of you wanted to be like them now? And everybody goes, not me. So get a revelation. Sometimes God don't give you what you want at the time you want it because God's smarter than you and me, and he knows if he does, the thing you're asking for will be the thing that'll hurt you instead of help you. So don't thank God don't always hear your prayers. Don't thank God don't always know what you need, but God knows when to give it and when not to give it because his time is better than your time and better than my time. So let's get into patience and wait and let, let it have its perfect work that you and I be completely lacking what? Nothing from God. Sometimes if God did it in our timing, it would be too much for us, and we would get hurt by it instead of it helping us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want a motorcycle like that. Honey, you can't even ride a training wheel bike. Can you want a motorcycle? Sure, go back for your kid. Watch him get killed. 
Probably just fall over on them and crush them because it's too heavy for them to pick it up and hold it. That's why you don't get your driver's license until you're 16 years old. Now they change it to 18, and for some of the people driving an 18, hope they make it 21. Amen. That's right. That's right. There's some of you out here driving 65 and need to quit. I'm just saying. Everybody talking about, I agree, everybody should be allowed to carry a gun if there are people that got their head screwed on right. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Praise God, I hope we don't pass a law that just anybody can carry a gun. Amen. Some people shoot themselves because they don't know how to hold a gun, much less shoot a gun. Amen. Amen. At least make them go through training so they don't kill themselves. I wonder if it's worth going to blow their own brains out because they don't even know what to do. I've been through police training, some, a little bit of police training, and went through uh, getting my license to carry a gun. Some of the people down there would go, how's it work? Like, don't point that thing, man. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you don't ever point at people with guns. Well, I just want to know, quit waving that gun around. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a chamber in there? Yeah, well, don't even wave it down because you got bullets in that thing. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, some of the people who get licensed, thank God they go through training. Oh, that's right. They had to go through training how to even operate and carry a gun. Don't touch it. Just leave it alone. I felt more unsafe in a training session than I did out in the world. Because some of the people in the training session needed to be trained really bad. before They shouldn't even give you a gun in training session. Make it one of those little plastic guns you go back to the store. Because yeah. all they want to do is wave it. Yeah. <laughs> do I hold it like this? Don't point at me, dude. You're on the other side of the room. <laughs> oh my. I'm just telling you. Help me, Jesus. I'm just being honest with you. Amen. <laughs> oh, Lord. We, <laughs> we have to understand our Heavenly Father will always meet our needs. He meets our needs when we seek His way of doing things. He meets our needs when we seek His way of doing things, not when we want Him to do things our way. See, one way is his system. The other way is the world system. The world system is he's a gimme, gimme, gimme God. God's system doesn't work that way. In God's system, you seek God for what you need. In the world system, you command God for what you need. He's not a puppet. He's God. Go to Matthew chapter 6 real quick. Are you with me? Are you getting anything out of it? Good. He meets our needs when we seek his way of doing things, not when we want him to do things our way. When we seek him first, all things will be added unto us. It tells you plainly. Amen in the word. We just read it. But it's added unto you and I in the time that he feels it's right to give it to us. So what we ask for many times won't hurt us. You've had kids and I have kids and grandkids that sometimes they ask for things that really will hurt them. Sometimes we give them things we shouldn't give them. Why? Well, it's just a way to get them off my back, so I just got tired of hearing it, so I went on. No. If they can't be adult enough to take care of it, don't give it to them. I don't care what it is. I don't care how hard they beg you. That's called manipulation. I bought my daughter stuff. I buy her stuff. She took care of it. She didn't take care of it. She wasn't getting it again. Amen. I ain't going to buy you $500 stereo systems and you tear them up and then start crying to me because I got your... Did you let anybody play on it? Yeah. What I tell you not to do? Don't let anybody play because you ain't getting another one. Save your money. That's it. Buy it yourself. That's it. Why? She didn't deserve it anyway. She wasn't taking care of it. That's right. That's right. And if you don't discipline them, show them the right way, they're going to keep having you pay for it. Lord Jesus, I'll wait till the letters on this. <laughs> Where's your treasure? Look at Matthew, look at 621. Last verse. Matthew 621. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So get addicted to God. God wants all of your heart. Love the Lord thy God with what? With all the what? With all the heart. <laughs> Love the Lord thy God with all the heart. <coughs> All that mind, that soul, that body, that's in lean. Don't be leaning on what? Y'all don't understand it? Love God, trust God, and watch what God will do, man. You call God a Savior, you want him to change your life, let him do it his way. We don't want God to change your life. We want to do it in our system, but we want God's system to line up with our system. Say, okay, God, I'm going to step in your system, but in your system, we're going to do it my way. It don't work that way. 
doesn't work that way. Amen? Amen. You can't determine your treasures by <laughs> considering where you spend most of your time, your money. <laughs> where you spend most of your time or your what? Your money. Amen. Can't determine your treasures by considering it. Yes, I do. You can't. Yeah, I should say I said can. I meant the word can. You can determine. Get my words right. You can determine your treasures by considering where you spend most of your time. Amen. Amen. I never seen people make more excuses how they don't why not to come to church than I've ever. I wish I could get more people making excuses why to come to church. Amen. I really do. Amen. And don't misunderstand me. We all where we at. Some people have to work for a living. You gotta work, you gotta work. I'm not saying that. I'm saying no, oh, but people make excuses why well, you know, that's I I didn't want to go out in the rain today. Just got it cut and it really looks good. And if I go out in the rain, it's going to get all frizzy. Maybe it'll make you look better. Just saying. Amen? Be honest with yourself. Is your heart turned towards the kingdom of God? If not, you can make a correction and choose his way today. Your choice, or I should say you choose his way by deciding to live a life according to his word. Seek him first, spend time in prayer, meditate on the word, and be obedient to what he tells you and watch your life change. I've never seen nobody in my life, and I've been saved since I was 22 years old. I've never, ever seen nobody that gave their life to God that ended up in a bad place. People say, well, I've seen a lot of people. They didn't give their life to God. They were double-minded. One foot in the world system, one foot in God's system, totally gets you nothing from God. You are you got to be an all or nothing for God kind of person. You can operate in the world system by God's system if you're operating through his system in a world system. But you cannot operate in the world system without God's system and expect God to line up with that system. It will never work in this system. They're two different systems. That's a whole lot of systems there, boy. I'll tell you yeah. that, a whole lot of systems going on. So, Lord, we pray today that people would change which system they're in. Yes. Amen. Are we operating out of the system of God, which lacks nothing, whichever provision is made, wherever healing is made, where all deliverance is at? Are we operating out of a world system where there's nothing that will ever line up to God's system, and all you have in that system is destruction? Lord, whoever's under the sound of my voice, whether it be in this church or be on that internet right now, I pray that whatever's in your life that's not operating by God's system, you'll make that change today. Today you'll make the change to operate in the kingdom of God, by the kingdom of God's system, which is a system that will never fail, which is an overcoming system, which is a system that is beyond all systems, because every system started somewhere. God's system started in heaven. Satan's system started on the world. One can never bring life, and the other can do nothing but bring life. So, Father, we pray today that people will choose the system of God and they'll make the changes that need to be changed in their life so that they can get addicted to Jesus yes. and reap the benefits of Jesus for their life. And it's in Christ's name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening by Facebook.